prayer and um, even Israel, um, Rosalind stopped me a minute and I love Israel. I know what the word says that we are to pray for Jerusalem. And um, so let's just take this time and ask the Lord to anoint the message he put on my heart early this morning. I went to bed thinking I'm probably preaching tomorrow and I had my own ideas. And all throughout the night, the Lord kept telling me the children's inheritance. So stay tuned. <laughs> well, Father, we thank you, Lord. We glorify you for who you are. Lord, this day is the one you've made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, Lord, because you, Father, reign and rule in our lives and in our hearts. You are worthy of all of our praise. Father, we lift up together corporately Israel, Jerusalem, Lord, all the people who call out on your name. Lord, we ask that you even send forth your glory, your might, your power that they would have dreams and visions that Jesus is the one, Jesus is their savior, that they're still waiting on him, but he already came and that he's coming back for them. Lord, we ask you to move with your great peace, that this land would have peace. We love you, Lord. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, all of heaven, you are welcome in this place, in this service. In your precious name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right, man, today was already a blessing. Um, Randy's word couldn't go any closer to my message. <laughs> Jessica's song choice um, was amazing. As the Deer Pants for the Water was one of my first favorite songs as probably a middle school age girl that was in a charismatic church and just love that, that what it was is I would read Psalms a lot, not really knowing much of the Bible, but I would read Psalms and I would obviously hearing that as a song being played, I thought, how cool is that, that they're singing the word? And I was always um, just encouraged by that. And I do love how the worship over the years has transpired. Not that hymns, anything's wrong with hymns. We love hymns. Those are also, you know, inspiration in our lives. But um, obviously middle school, that was probably... 40 some years ago <laughs> so but that those are my memories of first being um just in love with the lord and in in a amazing church all right so the children's inheritance i'm going to take this a couple different ways and tie it together how's that when um the lord kept waking me up and telling me that little title i just kept thinking of Kingdom Kids Daycare. <laughs> like, okay, Lord, I'm just shifting now and I'm going to bring the word, but I kind of still feel like I'm over here changing diapers, feeding kids, <laughs> instructing in love. But um, so what I first thought of was all the stages of the, my son's lives. So all of us here, the majority of us, I'm sure, have children. They could, we could be grandparents by now. So just the joy our children and grandchildren have brought our hearts. Could you all say that's true? Yeah. Um, I know Nancy and Bob, I was going to call them out. They just had their, I think, sixth grandbaby in Ohio. And, um, and they are so adamant about their Zoom time with their children throughout the week and their grandchildren. It is so awesome to see that there's such a distance with them and their two sons, but the time that they make up for that through Zoom calls. So it was, I'm sure, more than a joy that they got to be over there for this birth and uh, to help with the other grandchildren as they're waiting on mom to come home and baby sister. So out of the three boys, three grandsons, they finally got a little girl. Um, they have a, a girl, I think Isabella is the first granddaughter that they ever had, but um, then it's all been boys till now. <laughs> so. Um, as well hearing the word inheritance. So we hear that word and immediately think of monet monetary gifts, leaving a house to a family member. Those are just our natural thoughts. And that is how I'm starting the sermon, obviously. The message is by, in the natural, what we know as the word inheritance is. 
and there are people who receive inheritances and there are people that, are, that do not. Um, Proverbs 13, 22, it says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. But on down through Proverbs, it also warns about the inheritance and how it can be destructive to someone who isn't, doesn't use wisdom with it. So isn't there a fine balance with that? There truly is. I know Jason, we've talked about this a lot, and he's like, um, you know, even if we ever did get a bunch of money, would we leave the full amount to our kids? We don't want to ruin their life if they're not mature enough to handle it. I mean, obviously, we wouldn't, you know, who wants to give an 18-year-old a million dollars? You know, is there wisdom that they would know what to do with it? That That's really wisdom not doing that. <laughs> that is the word of the Lord. So back to the daycare a minute. So the little stages of life, they start with the babies, how they grow up to be little toddlers. I thought about, man, do I bring the cozy coop up, the little walker, because they're just learning to walk? Do I bring up the little baby uh, rocker, because they can't move at all, so they're just in the rocker? So you all can visualize that. Every stage of life, we have loved seeing our children and grandchildren grow. And to get a, be, a, a what a blessing it is to be a part of that. So leaving a legacy, this is what I was going to share. Um, as we grow in our Christian walk compared to the natural walk. So we all know there's times in our life we get a battle that comes our way. Do we pass the test with that battle or do we fall? No matter which, which way it went, if our heart and life is fully for Jesus, we'll get back on track. Is that true? I think we all in here probably could, um, could relate to that. So growing in our Christian walk, as we pursue Jesus to the fullest and we truly want to be Jesus followers, in that, our faith raises. Uh, miracles, signs, and wonders will begin manifesting through us. Do you all agree? What, what Randy said, that verse couldn't be any more perfect. Every one of us are to see the dead raised, the blind eyes open, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. That is what every Christian, if you call yourself a Christian, we should be seeing this. A lot. Do you all agree? Um, the point is, don't stay in the mess if you fall. So there's opportunities for all of us that we possibly could make a wrong decision and fall. But get back up, repent, and follow Jesus, and he'll clean you up as quick as you fell. Okay, I think we all probably have experienced that to some degree in our lives. Maybe not all of us, but a lot of us. I just want to encourage you guys, no matter where you're at this very moment, don't stop pursuing Jesus. Because all of you are reaching other people that me or Faye or Jason, you know, we can't reach. Because you all have your own sphere of influence where you're at and who God has you around. So to be encouraged... The main thing besides faith and not giving up and pursuing Jesus, be obedient to him. Even in the smallest thing, if you're obedient, you will continually see grace and you'll continually see the gifts of God starting to manifest in your life. I love this scripture. Um, John 1 I don't know which one I told you to play first. Yeah, John 1, 12. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So we're all God's children, right? How much more excited and joyful is he, he, he is that we're all his children, right? And the inheritance he has for us. So in the natural children's inheritance, we immediately think of, the house being left, the bank account that gets shared, however it works, all the monetary 
um, all the natural in the natural. But in God's kingdom, the children's inheritance should be what Randy spoke of in his charge. It should be the fruits of the Spirit, right? I remember um, a, a time I was away from the Lord for about nine months. Um, I called out on him, and he began just wooing me back through his word of his love. And the fruits of the Spirit, when he, when he set me free in Brownsville Revival, the fruits of the Spirit, it was as if they were downloaded just as much as a lot of his gifts. And that was, obviously, I didn't deserve any of it, um, but it was his goodness of my humility and repentance. Does that make sense? So if we stay repentive, if we stay following him, if we stay seeking after him, gaining wisdom, I believe this um, was the, why did that just leave my mind? Steve, what's the book of wisdom? Proverbs. So um, get into Proverbs if you want to gain some wisdom, even if you have to take one verse and use it as a nugget. Thank you, Steve. And always be obedient. So Jason laughed, and he says, um, so you're going to go on with my yes message? And I said, well, this probably can pertain to our yes, you know, our yes coming to Martinsville. But saying yes to the Lord in obedience is always key, right, for every one of you, for the blessings that come. Leave your children and grandchildren a legacy of your life that they see you all being sold out, walking in obedience, displaying the fullness of the Holy Spirit operating through you. Show your children and grandchildren by leading. Isn't that good? So I'm going to go to Ephesians. No, back that up to John. Let's go to John 14, 15. Listen to what the word says, that Jesus promises another helper. I don't know, I may have gotten off track here. Nope, that's exactly right. Okay. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever, the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Well, I thought that was pretty powerful because none of us are ever going to be considered an orphan when we love the Lord and pursuing him. Isn't that awesome? And it's by the Holy Spirit, and it's by the power of when we ask Jesus in our heart, he is there. But then as we grow in the Lord, he grows. And that's how the gifts start coming through us. You all, does that make sense? That's how we get cleaned up. You guys, healing and deliverance, it is for today. There's nothing weird of the word deliverance. I mean, years ago, 30 years ago, it had a bad name. So I would just call it freedom ministry <laughs> because people think you're crazy if you said, oh, I received deliverance, you know, like the exorcist or something. It was nothing like that. Um, I love how the Lord showed us to host Pastor Todd Smith and to get the pool in here. And he says, now do this once a month for my people. How many people have we seen healed in that pool? We've seen people receive freedom and deliverance. Um, we've seen many demon manifestations, but they were quiet. The faces were looking like some things were happening, but they had no voice just because of God's glory in this place. We've ministered with Pastor Todd Smith many times and seen deliverance about it every meeting, but it was very loud and boisterous and like a show. And we have so appreciated what the Lord has done here. Where nothing here is about a show. I'm not saying other places think that or have that attitude they don't but there's just something here he's doing a little different to where he's not allowing those things to have a voice and to draw attention to it we've seen many people not healed 
We've seen many, many healed. Some haven't. So what do we do as Christians? We press in more to the Lord. Lord, what do we, obviously, fasting prayer. That's, that's one scripture the Lord always sends us to. Are we fasting enough? Are we praying enough? And it's not even really up to us. It is just by the Lord and what he wants to do. But we are his vessels. We can't just go out and do whatever we want to do and, and come in and expect to see freedom. We have to have a righteous, holy, living, repent of life. Does that make sense? And I think everyone here knows that and wants that and probably is experiencing that. We want to see more healings manifest. We love when Ty gets in the water. He's, they're not here today, his family. But many of us have seen remarkable um, differences in Ty's life from being in the wheelchair. And now his leg is even straightened out. So the more that we press into the Lord, the more we're seeing. Uh, we had this last week someone come from Fishers, and she had just fallen off of something, a ladder or a stool, and totally her whole back and her tailbone was bruised and she had to bring a pillow and she really hardly could sit. And she got in the water and the next day it was no better. But then the day after she woke up and she's not been in one ounce of pain and she could do anything she wants to do now. So sometimes it's as we go is when the healing happens. And how many times have we seen that with Jesus? He'll say, get up and as you go, right? So we're seeing, it truly is like Bible days, we are seeing with what he's doing in the pool, at the altar, wherever. You, I know a lot of you go out and you minister at, at, on your uh, workplace, you minister in Kroger. We're seeing it in all kinds of different places, how the Lord's moving. And that is our goal, is to get you all activated into the fullness of what God has for you and for the people around you. It's not just about you. He wants, there's more people out there that, as I said, we can't reach him, but you all can. So so keep practicing. I love how uh, Randy had you all come up and lay hands, and we are believing that um, the nerve in that tooth would be healed because who wants to spend the money or have the time, you know, to go to a dentist if we know God can heal? And we could always start with, start with there and see what happens <laughs> and just keep believing. I want to read in Ephesians now. Ephesians was, is, is one of my favorite, favorite books. So this is Ephesians 1. It's a little long. It's uh, 3 through 12. It's not that it's so long. It's just so wordy and in depth of what God has for you all, for all of us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which he made us acceptable in the beloved. I'm going to jump down here. Having made known to us, this is verse 9, the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, in him. In him also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of his glory. Is that not powerful? So every one of us, if we have loved the Lord and serving him, we are, he is our inheritance. Everything he has, he wants us to have an experience. Does that make sense? 
And as we live fully sold out to him and pursuing him and following him, as we lay hands, I mean, we have to step out of our comfort zone and, and test this because it's not the easiest thing to be in Walmart or Kroger and you see someone you know and you love and you have to go lay hands on him because he just spoke that to you. You know, that's obedience. And so then you know he wants to do something to that person. Whether you say three words, it don't matter. If you just go lay hands on him like he asked, it's all up to him, right? A lot of the things we have to get out of our own mind that we're unworthy, because those are all things from the pit of hell, is what keeps us bound from not stepping out. So, and also could be fear of man. Um, I love Ephesians, and I love what his word says. This inheritance is much greater than anything in the natural we could ever receive. And every one of you guys are worthy to receive it. You are his kids. This morning when I first got up and started putting all this together, I, I thought, Lord, is there something that Bill Johnson speaks on in the children's inheritance? And this video popped up, and it's called Divine, is it Divine Health? Inter, um, inheritance? I don't know. I don't know what the title of the video is. You'll see it here in a second. But it's only about um, six, seven minutes long, maybe ten. I don't know. It's not very long. But it goes so well with what was on my heart to share so I want to end with that. Um, well, let's watch the video. I'm going to step over here. And then the altar call. I want you guys to, to just ponder this. The altar call today is going to be, if anyone obviously needs salvation, we don't want you walking out of here not saved. And, and knowing the fullness of joy you have, your life could be from experiencing Jesus and living for him. And then as well, we're going to um, ask if anyone wants to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit that would supercharge your walk. Because in these last days, which we all know, whether it's another 80 years or not, it could be five years, 80 years, but it's the last days. I mean, we all can verify that. Um, you know, we want, we don't have a lot of time, and we want to reach those people. And with the power of the Holy Ghost living within you, um, the spirit of truth, among other things, how he'll work through you and in you. It, it, it'll just, it's the funnest, it's the funnest thing we've ever done in our life, the serving the Lord. All right, let's listen to what Bill Johnson has to say a minute. Uh, just to hang out for a few minutes following a meeting and, and Ben Fitzgerald and Jean-Luc found this man walking into the back of this restaurant area and they went over and started up conversation with him and, and moments later I see them kneeling down around his knee, they're grabbing his knee and praying for him and they had some word of knowledge or something for this guy, you know, just this innocent guy walking through. <laughs> to them he had neon lights, you know. Yeah. Me, me, pick me. And uh, so they kneeled down. It was, it was, fun, it was fun to watch. I just sat there and watched them. And uh, they, they laid hands on him. They held his knee. And uh, Ben said, man, did you feel that? He, the guy said, yes, I did. And uh, his knee was cracking and popping and moving around. And, and the Lord completely healed the guy. And it was just it was fun to watch. It was fun to watch. See, divine hell is your inheritance. Now, we don't know a lot about it yet, but it doesn't mean it's not true. You've got to ask questions. got to look in the book. There's insights there that will unfold to us in the years to come. But don't, don't deny it because you don't understand it. The children of Israel had divine health in the wilderness. Who were they? They were not born again. They were in rebellion against God. and they experienced divine health. It would be tragic to come to the end of time and have the only generation that experienced divine health to be a people that were not born again in rebellion against God. So in these matters, this is the knowledge to the burning conviction where we contend for the purity, the holiness, the righteousness of God to actually be on display in every part of our life. 
And so they shook hands with this gentleman and, and just sharing the Lord with him. And, and, uh, and the guy said, hi, my name's Bob. And, and Jean-Luc said, uh, he said, it's so good to meet you. He says, it's interesting because I, I have a friend in the United States by the name of Bob Harrison. And he looked at me and said, I didn't tell you my last name. How did you know my last name? <laughs> that, was just, that was fun to watch because Jean-Luc heard when he said Bob. He heard Bob Harrison. And it wasn't until afterwards he found out he didn't give his last name. Wow. Needless to say, that had his attention. How did you know my last name? So he got healed, word of knowledge operated that God knows him, identified him. See, these are, this is the normal expression of the gospel. But as long as we have hang-ups on experiencing that which already belongs to us, it will be magnified as we try to take it out of the house to the people whose hearts could be one with a simple word, a simple gift, a simple prayer. The Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in His wings. As a result to that, you go out like and grow fat like stall-fed calves. That may be an offensive uh, picture to you, but there's youth involved. Fat was health, well-fed, and then trample the powers of darkness. You need a certain weight to trample. <laughs> the son of righteousness arising, announcing a new day, holiness, purity, power, working in tandem, will cause the people of God to rise up with a level of health, personal health, and authority. Let me describe fatness as an expression of the anointing in authority that enables us to crush and destroy powers of darkness that have afflicted and tormented people. You're going to see in your own personal life the opportunity to bring deliverance to people. It's not just healing. People need to be set free from demons that have tormented them. And I tell you, it's not, it's not been popular in the, in the American church, but... Uh, They're there. And seeing people free is just such a great privilege for us. I, I remember, uh, this is just fresh on my mind because of this last week, <clears throat> when uh, my former secretary, Judy Franklin, how many of you remember Judy? <clears throat> such a sweet one, such a great help to me, still is actually. She lives in Nashville now <clears throat> with her daughter, but still works for me. Helping, uh, helping in the ministry. <clears throat> but when she, uh, w within a short time after starting to work for me, she was, uh, actually she was in the back and her, I think it was her husband came up to me and said, would you pray for Judy? I said, yeah, what's up? <clears throat> and uh, she has this uh, kidney infection or something. And she was in the back. He went back to get her, came out here and I prayed for her. And <clears throat> she um I said, how, how are you doing? She said, do you want to know the truth? I said, yes, of course I want to know the truth. She said, it's worse. And I said, that's good. Amen. That's awesome. Because now we know what it is. Because see, anytime an affliction gets more painful under prayer, it's because the anointing torments a demon. And the reason he'll increase the pain is to try to bring fear to the person who's sick and fear to the person who's praying. Why do you think when the disciples tried to cast the demons out of the child, remember the dad in Mark 9 brought his child to, to the disciples to be healed and delivered. And the demon threw him in the fire and the water, tried to kill him, and he's foaming at the mouth on the ground. And this huge scene, why is he creating a scene? To create fear in the people doing the ministry. See, anytime the devil is in the open, 
That's his last card. That's not his best card. His best card is hiding in the pew. His best card is trying to stay concealed in a religious setting, unrecognized, unidentified. So whenever he's flushed into the open, his last effort is to try to instigate or ignite fear in people. And so he does so with extreme manifestations. And the disciples couldn't deliver. And they were experienced in deliverance. And so the father saw Jesus, brought the child to Jesus, and he, he uh, delivered him. As soon as he did, the disciples took Jesus aside and said, how come we couldn't do it? And it was a, a, a legitimate question because they had experience. He had already entrusted them to go to their hometowns, and they saw great amounts of healing and deliverance. And they were shocked when it didn't work. So that tells me they already had a history of success. And uh, how would you like to be shocked when it didn't work instead of shocked when it worked? Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> And Jesus said, this kind only comes out with prayer and fasting. It's a profound lesson that some obstacles are only removed with prayer and fasting. But for me, the bigger lesson is that when the disciples didn't get an answer, they took Jesus aside. They had to find out why. They were not willing to live with an unanswered prayer. The lack of conviction, the lack of a burning heart enables us to coexist with unanswered prayers and it not mattering. And so the Lord is stirring up a zeal that's based on the righteousness and purity of God a zeal that helps to bring about a new day, a new day of miracles, a new day of the demonstration of God for people. Yeah, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this video. I do pray that it's a great, great strength and encouragement Amen. to you. Amen, isn't that good? And I've got a verse that really is my cry for all of us, and it's uh, Psalms 20, it's verse 4. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's all my right. prayer. That's my prayer. So this let's would just be kind of close of with... Rich. Anyone here wanting to make Jesus your Savior? You want to become a Jesus follower? Come up front to the altar. I'm just going to have a couple of my workers, Randy, Carlene, Uve, Faye, if you want to come up. Anybody who wants just a, a charge, just wants a touch from the Lord, it's the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you have another issue in life you want prayer for, just come up and get with the Lord. You don't have to meet with them. You can meet with the Lord and cry out yourself. Um, he hears your cries. He knows where you're at. I love Bill Johnson's message today. It's encouraging. There's not one of us sitting here. There's not one person in this city that cannot do what Jesus has called them to do. We are all called. And it's going to take much more than what's even here in this city or in our, our room to reach the city. I love the key point of being obedient. Stay obedient. Stay asking the Lord questions. Draw closer to him. We are living in probably some of the most amazing times in life from God's word. And we're going to see a lot. We love you guys. We're here for you.